I'm Michael Marshall, and uh, I'm just an ordinary member of Shibakto, uh, but it, I'm particularly concerned about um, the coming energy crisis and how uh, we, Community Internet, can offer something to solve in the world's energy crisis through the Internet. And uh, Terry has alluded to that, but I think we'll, I'll try to go into more detail. Now, about a month ago, when we were all basking in the uh, the self-congratulation orgy that Canada was doing around the Olympics and owning the podium, a little report came out from Harvard that didn't get much attention on our television, but it was much less flattering. Now, it was not about Canada. It was a report to the Americans um, about all of the world. And, you know, there's internet in every country, and this was very, was very exhaustive. It didn't just cover the, the, the biggies, your, you know, your, your Koreas against Canada. I mean, it covered everybody. So um, the man has, was, has taken a lot of criticism, the, the chief author, but he really has probably more information gathered up than, than any of the, the big lobbyists who've been against him because really they haven't had that much concern about what's happening in Latvia. Well, he's checked everywhere. And, and as, a, as he sifted through it all, he's come to some conclusions. Um, he says basically, and you've heard this before, that we pay far too much for far too slow internet. Um, what I took out of the report, and I will show you the, the, uh, the uh, web address for the report, because you might want to read it for yourself. The thing, most interesting thing that I took out of it was that the nations that were the poorest in energy, that had the fewest energy resources, were very intent on, on getting into fiber optics. So you notice that Japan and Korea do not have tar sands. Countries like Canada uh, and the U.S. Uh, richer in, in, in energy and more self-confident about where the energy world's going have taken a much more laid-back uh, um, approach to it. But um, the, this is the title, if you're looking for it, Second Generation Connectivity, and that's, so afterwards you can come up here and get that uh, URL, or if you remember that title, you will find it. Um, now, and I thought that we perhaps just suggest that we put some of the URLs on our site as well. Yes, yeah. And I posted this, this presentation online. So, um, Now, I'm talking about jobs, 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 just like Brian Mulroney. I'm trying to emphasize to the people of Spryfield that fiber to the home is not about what if you let a young geek tell you that it means faster video games for your children. What I'm saying is, is that it's, it's, it's so essential that what you really need to be saying is if we don't have it, Will my kids have a good job in 10 years' time? Because look at these figures. I mean, uh, we are at a point, we are basically one hundredth of one percent. Japan is about half. Half of every home has that. that. Um, and, and so we're, we're well behind. Now, what does it mean uh, if you have fiber? I don't know if any of you have done video conferencing, but usually there's a whole pile of problems, dropouts, it's not very clear, there's a lag. You know, you're not, you're not getting it really comfortable. But if, it, if you have the first rate version, you could imagine um, this kind of a, a setup here. When energy becomes scarce and expensive, um, <coughs> manufacturing will become decentralized. Um, it will be done in smaller plants, closer to the, the end users. The ideas, however, the inventions will still come from anywhere. They could be coming from Tan Talon. Now, they've, the guys in Tan Talon have licensed their new idea to a small factory somewhere in Korea. And the guys in Korea are having trouble putting it together. And they, we can no longer, this company for a start is small in Tan Talon. It doesn't have the money. But even so, maybe energy is too expensive to find people out there constantly. So now we need a video setup. So both technicians can see exactly what he's doing wrong. I mean, exactly. With no lag, he's looking at it, he says, well, you put this, you screwed it in backwards. Because I work in the hotel industry in Halifax, and I can tell you, any night of the year, there are hundreds of people here in Halifax whose job is to fly around North America solving problems instantly. Something is down. No one here can fix that problem. It's a, it's a, a hospital battery system. Guy's got to fly in because the people apparently here aren't capable enough to to figure that out, given the amount of information they're willing to exchange. But that's going to have to change. We're going to have to be willing to license 
uh, the, the things we come up with and trust that the people in the local area can, re can repair it. We're not going to be shipping it back. We're not going to be shipping people in. That will depend on really, really, really high quality uh, uh, internet. It, it has to be sort of television at least quality, high definition television quality, with no lag in the audio or no lag in the movements of the hands, uh, if it's going to work. Since it doesn't now, even with the big buck boys, someone flies out and sees it. Ah, oh, that's your problem. You know, so I'm telling you that even the best companies in the world can't depend on a supplier, a small supplier having the kind of video quality that maybe fills the boardrooms at IBM, but hasn't filtered out to the rest of, of IBM. So we, we need to think about uh, what we're going to do with fiber to, the, uh, fiber to the home or to a small business. Beyond what Terry's large research institution, I'm saying that every small business, uh, you, you uh, repair, um, ride on lawnmowers if they still exist in an energy crisis. But anyway, um, you may well, instead of having a salesman come and pitch you what to sell, to buy next year, or how to fix it, or shipping it off, you may well, you're just a small business fixing those kind of things. You may well have a video conferencing room where your mechanics will be in there talking to the guys who built it, whether that's in somewhere in Illinois or somewhere in, in Japan. That's what we're going to have to look at. So we're not trying to say that the fiber to the, uh, fiber to the home is something that, that sort of is a gee whiz thing for well-to-do suburbs. It's for everybody, and it's for every little business. Now, I'm going to try and emphasize it, keep it really simple. You've heard a lot about old copper. Most of us are using cable or DSL over, over from Alliant. We hear about fiber, we hear about fiber, wireless, we may get our television for, from satellite. The, the thing is, it's not how much information they can ship out in a second in most cases, it's how, how long a distance they can do that. In the distances within your home or a very small business from 10 to 100 meters, at 10 meters they all work wonderful. You have Ethernet probably in your home running from uh, your, uh, either your modem to your, your uh, computer or to your printer. That's just ordinary copper wire. It works wonderful, very, very fast speeds. Um, your, when your wireless works, again, it pumps out a lot of stuff. Um, that's for, for short distances, but as you go to 100 meters, they start crashing unless you get more advanced hardware. Now, satellite, I'm taking right out of the picture because it's great for television, but it has a latency problem. You can't use your phones very easily. Or, so it's, you know, that's why you don't hear it discussed as, you know, why aren't we beaming this all to a satellite and sending it down? We wouldn't need all this wire. So it, it won't work. Now, the advantage of fiber optics is, is that it's, it's fantastic from 10 to 100 kilometers. That's a thousand times as far as we're talking about because it has, relatively speaking, no signal loss, no interference from lightning, uh, from, from many things. Um, they, they have to code it and they have to do a fair bit. But had, for, for dollars, what we're concerned about, it takes a lot less money to, to make that run 100 meters compared to uh, your copper technology. So, in fact, um, this system here, the science is complex, but really the dollar path has been the same for the last hundred years. So I'm going to tell you that up at the trunk, the backbone, if it's the internet, trunk services system, if you're talking about telephone, cable, it's all the same thing. It's relatively simple technology, and it's not even particularly expensive. It's running from a few major points. It's it not owned by anyone. It's a, it's a network of networks. And if you can get access to it, it's relatively easy to get into. There's not economic barriers. You can peer in. But it's at the high end. Now, this part here is called the middle mile. And it's controlled in most cases by what you call your legacy companies. That's your telephone company in your area or your cable. Co telephone has 100 years of investment buried in the ground all through here. That's a lot of money. Cable, 50 years. Uh,